The next important event to interpret in ANOVA are the confidence intervals. The confidence intervals and the box plot, they help us to understand the range in which individual subgroup means vary or perform. The way we interpret is to check if the confidence intervals overlap with each other or not. If they overlap, then the chance is that statistically there is not much evidence that separates these subgroups. So in all probability they would be similar. But if the intervals do not overlap and if the p-value is less than the test significance level of let's say 5%, then in that case we can safely interpret that the data subgroup means represent different levels of performance. In this example, the confidence intervals for each city is clearly separated from each other. They don't overlap. We also saw earlier uh, in the ANOVA table that the p-value is less than 5%. So in this case, uh, we can say that there is a significant difference between the city-wise ambulance response times. Since the response time is, is uh, a lower the better kind of a factor, uh, now we will check the means that we see here. And uh, we can make out that city 1 has the lowest response time of 13.04 minutes. So here uh, we have seen there are no overlaps uh, between the confidence intervals. Uh, and we also saw that uh, p-value is less than 0 0.05. So we can safely assume that city 1 performance level is better than other cities and hence it can be benchmarked. But a word of caution is that many times, actually most of the times, the confidence intervals do overlap and then we cannot make the decision of benchmarking only by looking at the mean then in such cases, how do we make this uh, decision around uh, benchmarking? That's when the two keys test and ANOM, which is analysis of means, uh, become useful. Let's also have a quick uh, look at how the calculations are done when it comes to the confidence intervals that we are talking about on this slide. Uh, confidence intervals are always given by the one sample T test stats as uh, the T distribution, that's the most representative distribution while working with uh, samples. The intervals are given by mean plus or minus of, uh, plus would be when we are talking about the upper confidence level and minus when we are talking about the lower level. So it's given by mean plus minus of T stat characterized by one minus alpha by two and uh, degree of freedom multiplied by S by root of n where s is the pooled standard deviation and n is the subgroup size in our example we have taken alpha at 0 0.05 degree of freedom in this case would be for the observations which would be uh, 27 s we saw it's 0.94 and n is 10 because each city has got 10 data points so it becomes T 1 minus alpha by 2 degrees of freedom so alpha is 0 0.05 and degree of freedom is 27 so we need to look for the T 0.975 and 27 in the T table so we get a value of 2.05 we can also do this calculation uh, in Excel using the formula T dot INV uh, so as an example, let's say for city 1, the upper level can be calculated as mean, which is 13 uh, plus uh, the T stat, which is 2.05 multiplied by S, which is uh, 0.943 divided by square root of N, which is 10. Now, uh, that would be 13.65. So, that's how this calculation happens and uh, this is the value corresponding to 13.65. This is the value corresponding to mean which is 13. So that's 
uh, all about the interpretation when it comes to the confidence intervals and the calculations behind it. Oops, okay, one more query coming in. So what can I do for you? You didn't explain the box plot. Yeah, uh, okay, let me give a high level idea on how to read the plot. Uh, typically, since we are already uh, learning about ANOVA, uh, we, most of us would be clear about the box plot. But let's spend some, some time at a high level, let's you know talk about that. Uh, as we said, box plot helps to visualize the data around the median. So, as an example, let's say city 2, let's look at this plot. Now, uh, this is the first quartile, that is the 25% of the data points, if we arrange the data, let's say in ascending or descending order, let's say we do that in ascending order. So the first 25% of the data points are going to lie between this point and this point. So this point, let's say corresponds to around 15 and let's say this is around 15.3 so between 15 and 15.3 we would see that 25 percent of the total data points would be lying in this sample for city 2 so that's the first quartile this is the second quartile which corresponds to the median so another 25 percent can be expected in this range this is the third quartile so another 25% and then this is the last quartile where another 25%. Since we have arranged the data in ascending order, what this small tail means is that the last 25% of the data points are going to be lying between a very narrow range. And lastly, this data point uh, is an outlier. Now this has been tagged as an outlier because when you look at the within subgroup variance of this data set, this guy seems to be an exception. And finally, this is where the mean of the subgroup lies. So at a high level, this is how you interpret the box plot. I hope this video was useful. We would always be delighted to see your likes, comments and mails as we consider you an integral part of our learning endeavor. Keep watching this space as we plan to host more learning videos on concepts from DMAC, Lean, DFSS, Reengineering, Theory of Constraints, BPM and Operations Research. Please do subscribe to the page and keep receiving updates as and when we upload a new tutorial. Do share the links or channel details in your group so we end up creating a much larger learning community. In case you want us to talk about any specific concept, feel free to contact us. The contact details are mentioned here on the slide as well as on the page. So good luck and happy learning.